It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across the USA and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. Good morning. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Thank you for being here. All right. I don't even care about the response to yeah. this question from Corrine Jean-Pierre at the White House yesterday. I just love the question. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure, for some reason, the White House, this is from the official uh, White House uh, YouTube page. Mm. For some reason, the audio is low, so make sure it's it's up there as much as possible here. Here is the, 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 the question here. Listen, listen to this. All right. <laughs> because it's not, to me, I don't know if I'd ever ask this question because, to me, it's more of like, to really tick her off, she doesn't get ticked off. But when I when I you heard the you when you hear the scope of the question, it's it's interesting. Mm. Question: It's not unusual for presidents to invite members of their family to official White House functions, um, like the state dinner last week. I'm curious, though, in light of some of the recent legal controversy, if the president communicated to members of his family not to conduct business <laughs> on, on White House grounds. Can you tell us? Uh, about it, about any kinds of guardrails that are up. So, uh, and, and she just doesn't answer the question. Says I can't, you know, really can't answer it. But uh, you know, values uh, never answers the question. Mm-hmm. But I just love the question. <laughs> I, what are we... All right. So the president, the end of state dinner, and members of the president's family was there. You know, talking about Hunter Biden. I don't know if his brothers were there or not, but we know Hunter was. Did the president let them know they can't discuss business? <laughs> <laughs> At an official state function. Yeah. Don't talk influ don't attempt to go to any of the foreign leaders there and attempt to coerce them, extort them, threaten them, or let me tell you something, Fredo. If I show up <laughs> and you are anywhere near the house. Oh my gosh, I just love that question. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that question. It's, just, it's uh, to me when I heard it, it was like a taunt. It was almost a taunt. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> no, it really was. It's like let me get around. Let me get around because if I ask directly, did the president take a bribe? She's not going to answer that. <laughs> so let's talk about. Well, is there any general rules where the he tells the family because of what we know already exists? Not to do any influence peddling or any pay for play or any extortion at a state dinner. Yeah. And the reason we say that is the one (laughs) one thing that came out of 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 last Friday. And Mm -hmm. this was after the the WhatsApp, uh, uh, you know, uh, had uh, had come out. And then the, the Senate came out and said, this is the, you know, Ron Johnson and. You know, the Republicans in the last Senate, not this Senate, but 2020. Oh, that money that they got from China? $100,000 went into this account, $5.1 million, or $5 million went into this account for a total of $5.1 million. We know the account that it went into. Mm-hmm. And I said that when I heard that. I forgot whether that was Friday or Saturday when I heard it, but I went, oh, my God. I really did because I went, they, you know, they, the Republicans just sent the message to the administration. We got gotcha. you, yeah, because we know what the, we know that that money went into the account, and this is Hunter stating it. And Hunter, this is, and I don't know why. I, it didn't even hit me when I first heard it this way, but the most damning thing is Hunter indicted his father. It Hunt, was it, it was bound to happen. There was no way to get through this without one of them throwing, you know, one or the other under the bus. There was no way to do that. When they're connected, at some point, one of them are going to look to save their own hide. Or they're going to, through the evidence, demonstrate, which I think Hunter has clearly, if you look at the evidence, He's shown his father's involvement on how many accounts now? On how many levels now? So there's no way around that. You can't 
walk away from this. That's how big this thing is. Because it's either the largest set of false allegations ever thrown at a president. Or it's the largest presidential scandal in American history. If it's false, it falls on the whistleblowers and their sources and everybody else involved in the allegations. If it's true, holy cow. That's the way it's going. That's Those are your two right there. And where's the one big sourced story from the New York Times, the Washington Post? Or any of them, wow, discounting any of this, these Listen. allegations directly, evidence-wise. Listen to this. The IRS whistleblower wanted GPS locations to check Hunter and Joe, to check to see if Hunter and Joe were in the same room after the what WhatsApp claim to the China businessmen. But the prosecutor blocked that request. So when he said our father was in the, my father is in the room, my, and multiple times referring to his father, mm-hmm. the next logical thing from the IRS whistleblower, who was the investigator, said, I want to see the GPS locations of Hunter and Joe Biden. and Because that's, that's how you would know they were in right? the same room yeah, together. Right. You would know within a couple of feet. Right. Wow. And well, I didn't this okay. story this story is in the Daily Mail mm-hmm. UK and it came out 3 days ago. I haven't seen it. I just was I was just going through right now I was going to, I wanted to look at the 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 WhatsApp actual message again and I came upon the Daily Mail UK as you were just talking there. It said Iowa whistleblower wanted GPS locations to check Hunter and Joe Biden were in the same room because that would be the thing you'd want. How do you know if he was in there? Let's go to GPS. Here's my question. Either does Joe have a does Joe, this is an interesting thing. Does 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 the president does Joe Biden have a cell phone where you could check where his GPS is, or does the Secret, the Service, Secret Service tag Service. a president? Well, no, it, it's electronically would be one thing. Was there a Secret Service detail, and was yeah. was he there on that day? You could even narrow it down. Were they under the same roof? Wow. Because this was in the WhatsApp message message was sent in July of 2017. Yep. He was no longer vice president, but he would still have Secret Service detail. That's true, right? Yep. But the 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 thing about the thing about that was it's either the the message because the 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 fact that the Republicans have taken that message that the lawyer has not denied, in fact, implied that in his response that it was legit. Be, but this was just Hunter Biden in the throes of his drug addiction, and his family had nothing to do with any of that. Wow. <laughs> They're throwing him under the bus. All right, we're going to get you. We're going to get you a slap in the hand. Uh, you did this. You did this all. I was never there. But uh, you have him stating Ooh. it, which 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 makes it again, either uh, that in his mind, because he was doing either it was a quid pro quo. He wanted money for the quid pro quo or he was just threatening a Chinese businessman, Chinese Communist Party member. He was extorting money from him with the threat that his father and all of his friends could still take him down somehow. Wow. That was, what was the date? July? I can't 30th. remember. Okay. For guess the, guess for the, what? What? <laughs> His Secret Service detail had just ended on the 20th. Wow. A, a former vice president gets it for six months. Okay. 
which would be July 20th. So it's quite possible there was no Secret Service detail there. Then the question would be, is there any kind of electronic evidence available? Because you you do want to know. I mean, that is going to be, clearly, I think that's going to be their defense if it ever gets to that point. The defense from Hunter's people is going to be, oh, well, he was on crack or he was mistaken or he was just lying to the Chinese official. His dad wasn't sitting there. I mean, at some point, if it rises to that level, they're going to have to separate the defense of Hunter from Joe Biden. And Hunter is going to have to take the fall. That's just the way it's going to go down. I mean, we've already started to see that with the indictments last week. But, I mean, if this stuff gets to that point, then there's no way that they won't. I mean, they're already trying to do it but they're going to look to build a wall around Joe Biden. And uh, Shadley's attorney said it on Friday on Fox News. I didn't, I don't know why I didn't see this. I didn't see this anywhere. He goes, so the agent said, let's go get the GPS location on the two of the father and son. And let's see if they're actually in the same room at the same time. The prosecutor said, we're not doing that. So closed another door on the investigation to make what is relevant to this case. And it happened over and over and over again. And that's why Gary Shapley wants to come forward and make sure everybody could see and this could see the light of day. And that's a quote from the lawyer. If there was any evidence of that, electronic evidence, I'm guessing it's gone. Yeah. yeah. In all likelihood, yeah. And if indeed his Secret Service detail ended on July 20th, which is exactly what it states, um, former Veeps get it for six months. And if that's the case, then that would have been 10 days after his detail was gone. Again, this is just one of the, as we know, the, 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 the transfers. And there's so much here because you would wonder, you know, whether, because we talk about, would the president of Burisma ever testify in U.S. court? Is, does somebody have would, those recordings? Does somebody have the, yeah, does somebody have those In the recordings? electronic age, right. they, it's not just like having just a tape, something tangible, where if you destroy that, there are no copies of it, or you hope there would be none. But if in, in the electronic age... You could send a copy to multiple people as as often as you wanted to. So it could be in the cloud on so many different levels if that is the case. And if it is true, the allegations that the president of Burisma recorded them because he was creating some protection from for himself because the allegations also included that they were coming to him. They were coercing him. He wasn't going to them. They were pushing him for payment. Remember, that's just two things that we have so far. But I said mm-hmm. that's one reason it was damning is because uh, not only does it set up the electronic money trail and start connecting the dots because of the Senate investigation yeah. that ended in 2020 that knew that money went into the account. Right. And they finally figured out, okay, that came because of the WhatsApp. Okay, that came just a day after 100000 was deposited, then another $5 million, and that's where the money went. I mean, that's huge. And, again, no matter what you say, it is Hunter Biden uh, indicting his father. Yeah. It's exactly. Hunter, and so, as I think Turley said it, so what happens next? They go to, you know, they 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 – call all these people in and, you know, Bobby Linsky and who else knows who will testify at that point and what type of electronic, you know, records they'll have as to where the money went, you know, well, where, where it went yeah. and, and what, what the conduits, the, the, uh, the, the conduits were like for influence peddling uh, and maybe witnesses from other countries, who knows, but Hunter Biden will have to testify. Said if I, Hunter Biden gets in there and says over and over again, I'm taking the fifth, I'm taking the fifth, I'm taking the fifth, and every, all the questions are about his father. Was your father involved in it? And he says, I'm taking the fifth. It, it, and legally, it may not, it, it may be tough to move beyond that 
but politically, politically, it's, going it's to extremely tell the damaging. Story. As somebody says, that's like, and even if he comes out and says, I was lying to the Chinese officials. My dad wasn't in the room. Okay, now let's go to the next stage. All right, fair enough. Let's go to the next stage. The movement of money. Right. And, and, and why were you getting paid? And and did his father get part of that money? Right, exactly. If his father got exactly. part of the money, it doesn't matter there's whether his no, father there's doesn't no matter whether his father's in the room. There's no exactly. Doesn't there's no way point, there's right? nowhere there's nowhere to go here for them. Eight six six ninety red eye. Perhaps a big boost at the fuel pump for higher blend biofuels, courtesy of the latest investments within USDA's Higher Blends Infrastructure Incentive Program. We are announcing $25 million of awards, 59 investments in all across 15 states. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack with the announcement to reporters Monday. The funding is the first in a series of investments in domestic biofuel infrastructure of up to $500 million. The initial $50 million, including the first funding allocation, was made available last December. And next month, we are expecting to make available the first tranche of $90 million from that remaining $450 million. With allocations from that first round of $90 million broken down into three focus areas, fueling stations, field distribution centers, and home heating oil distribution. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. This report is made possible by Cenex Roadmaster XL Premium Diesel and Sitco Lubricants. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. 866-90-RED-EYE. So I'm reading here. Uh, media uh, MSNBC legal analyst dismisses awfully flimsy Hunter Biden text to Andrea <laughs> Mitchell. Uh, you know, and, and does the entire thing and says uh, on Friday's edition of MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell reports, Mitchell pointed out that President Joe Biden was not in office during this time period and McQuaid dismissed the message as puffery from Hunter. Mm. Uh, Barbara McQuaid said, yes, I heard the statement. I find it to be awfully awful flimsy to build any sort of investigation uh, to build uh, any sort of investigation. It uh, just simply is some sort of puffery from Hunter Biden. Well, the email, the WhatsApp, the WhatsApp went out to that person. Yeah. He didn't write it to himself. Right. So he wrote it. And here's where you get to the point of how the left is viewing this. The left is viewing this in the bubble of the message only. Yeah, not right. everything yes. surrounding right. it. Yeah, the, you have to take this as just a piece of the entire part, the totality of the fact that we know the millions of dollars went to the Biden family. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, if it were standing if, only on its own, if they right. were the only thing out piece there, piece of evidence, it would be flimsy. That yes. it, it would definitely you, be flimsy you, because I would ask, where's the hard evidence that that even came from Hunter Biden? And and all of that. But that's not it's only one piece of the puzzle. It's right. a key piece of the puzzle when you put it together with everything else. Yes. Again, it adds more with everything else, which includes the whistleblowers under oath. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that we know the 20 LLCs happened. We know that the suspicious activity reports came from the U.S. Treasury. Mm-hmm. We know that the FBI whistleblowers are claiming there's a bribe, which, again, sets a pattern when set with this one and maybe more to come. Right. And so that's the thing. If you just take that on its own without looking at any of the other evidence that exists out there, yeah, you might come to that conclusion, but you can't looking at everything. Right. You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios.
Toronto Radio, hey, he's Eric, I'm Gary. Defense officials have decided not to investigate an incident in which a balloon was seen flying across eastern Montana on Sunday night. Uh-huh. Representative Matt Rosendale, a Republican who represents the area where the nation, balloon was spotted, said several people were tracking a balloon flying across eastern Montana at 57,000 feet. He immediately contacted the Department of Defense and was told the agency was aware of the incident and chose not to investigate it because of the size of the balloon and the low probability that it was conducting any surveillance. Okay. If the spy balloon in February taught us anything, it's that people of Montana are vigilant and want to know what is flying over our state and will expose the Biden administration for not uh, protecting us. The uh, image shared by the representative shows the tracking of the balloon spotted over Montana on Sunday that I'm looking at the tracking thing. Uh, here, Fox mm. Dues Digital reached out to the DOD and Northern Command. The North American Aerospace Defense Command on Monday said it was aware of the incident. The object is a privately owned civilian balloon registered with the FAA and operating within the FAA regulations and requirements. Uh, you can understand the lack of trust in the Department of Defense and the Biden administration on that. Of course, yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, then, then when Biden goes to... When he talks about the balloon and said, you know, last week, well, it was, you know, whatever. The president didn't even know about it. Of China, the Xi didn't even know about it. Uh-huh. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No. It was an official. It was an a, 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 I'm sure that Biden doesn't know where all of our spies are either at any right. particular time. Right. Yeah. Um, and it turns out uh, that uh, it was this latest balloon was registered to Swalwell's org. <laughs> so no reason to fear anything at all. It's perfectly fine. I uh, just that time in Swalwell, I forgot who who went after him and said <laughs> Tell your girlfriend she left her balloon over Montana? No, no. no it was just, that it was was just it was a direct <laughs> thing going basic I, for, I forgot I don't I, I don't want to I don't want to paraphrase, but it was implying that you, you know, you slept with a Chinese spy. And then the left went nuts going, there's no indication that he had sex with her. <laughs> In fact, the Chinese spy responded by going, ew. <laughs> so they have a point. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, look, it's perfectly fine. It's it's just a balloon. That's just a ten foot creature out in my backyard. Nobody panic. And then you have the story of the trans cyclist Austin Phillips. Yeah. Who said men uh, are that biological men are underrepresented in women's sports. <laughs> okay. Austin Phillips, the yeah. Why biological Why man, <clears throat> trans woman who won a. <laughs> Growing number of women titles in professional cycling yeah. has complained that men are underrepresented <laughs> in women's sports and blasted the nature of discourse. You know, I read the where this article originally came from, a very, very friendly article in the Knoxville Times. Mm. And, I mean, uh, even when I read the headline, I said, that's not, that's not accurate. Mm. It was written by Cora Hall, Knoxville mm. News Sentinel. What pro cyclist Austin Killips told Knox News about handling protesters targeting her as an openly trans woman. It's not why they're targeting. No. Hit him. Right. They're targeting him because it's a biological man competing against biological women. Got nothing to do. Right. If he went about if he went about whatever he would do, not being not competing against women. Nobody would have any idea no. who he is. No. None. No. The only reason people know who he is is because he raced against biological women. No. That's it. No. It's not because he's a trans woman. No. Ugh. 
Yeah, it's um, yeah, that's insane. That is um, insane that they would go. But it's it is predictable that the next logical move is men are underrepresented in women's sports. <laughs> How could that not be the next move? Women, listen, because for so long women stayed quiet on this. Mm-hmm. Do you really want to be dominated in every aspect by us men? Right. Is that what I have right? to think you do? <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm just going with. In fact, I'm just going to say the answer is yes. <laughs> is your wife listening right now? I hope not. <laughs> I really hope. I really hope not. Hey, do we have a corporate rate at the local hotel? <laughs> just unrelated question. Anyone know? Yeah. Is that the problem with women's sports? That biological men are underrepresented in it is. women's sports. It is. Is that the problem? It is. Is that why nobody's watching the WNBA? That's exactly why. More men are needed? Right. It's exactly why. And we all know it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That had to be, though, the, the next logical step is, well, we got to push for more. I mean, that's. That's it, right? Because at first well, it was... It, I'd say in, until at least 50%. Mm-hmm. I mean, there needs to be equity. There needs to be equity. Why Why aren't they pushing for more? We're... we're hey, we're the pioneers. <laughs> we're the pioneers here pushing for equity in women's sports by bringing in more men. Now, look... There, uh, from what I can tell mm-hmm. from the Seattle Pride Parade and the Toronto Pride Parade, there were plenty of naked men riding bicycles that might have an interest in doing this. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is they don't want to put on the outfit. Right. They're they're apparently nudists. If if it was the naked men bicycle racing league. Why are people such anti-nudist? I'll tell you why I am. Well, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> a human body is ugly. I don't want to. I, I, I don't. I'm not looking to see any of that, especially did, on a bicycle. I did. I did three years. I did like I, like I was did in prison. Three years. So I, I, I did. I, I served did, my time. I did. I didn't. No, <laughs> I want to make this clear. Not at a nudist colony. <laughs> I did Close my, enough. I did. I did my three years on the Emerald Coast of Florida. Yeah. Northwest Florida, and and uh, spent a lot of time doing a lot of research. Mm-hmm. I did research at beach resorts, and um, uh, I, uh, you know, observed and realized at that point that the vast majority of human bodies uh-huh. are ugly. Oh yeah, yeah. that including I, I. By the way, I'm including myself in mm-hmm. there. Oh yeah. Uh, this this was not. My statement was not a statement of arrogance or narcissism. I'm going to the beach <laughs> next week, and right now I'm trying to find enough long sleeve and long <laughs> long pants to wear on the beach. I Nobody was, needs to see that. I was the only one in the 80s when the whole topless movement came out and all this, yeah. that women should be able to yeah. take their tops off, that I said we should have equality. Men should put their tops back on. Yeah. I over I was weekend, for full equality, equity. Over, over the weekend, I put some uh, new cargo shorts on and immediately stopped and put my jeans on. I Serious. Not a joke. I said, nope. Nope. No. You can't wear jeans outside now. You got to be wearing shorts. I'm, I'm wearing jeans out. And I wore jeans. I was wearing jeans over In the weekend. In this heat? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't. Absolutely. Yeah. Then you, then you are. You are a true Texan, though. You are a true Texas oh, yeah. cowboy because mm-hmm. Texas cowboys wear their jeans in the oh, yeah. middle of a hundred degree heat. Yeah, and long sleeve because you're going to be working outside. You need to they they'll tell you you got to protect your skin. Yep. Well, I'm That's not going to hat us for too. I'm not going to work that long outside. <laughs> yep. No, it's uh, no, I don't. Uh, uh-uh. no, no. And if we want to go swimming, that's fine. The jeans will dry. My granddaughters are going to want to swim in the ocean like they always do. And I've got to get out there with them. 
you know, in case of, you know, that something happens. Don't want to be there to protect them. But I'll be wearing jeans. <laughs> You're not going to be I, wearing was that, jeans. That old the... guy know where he is? My gosh. Oh, my poor guy. I don't know why, but you're talking about, I don't know why I was picturing when you said I'm going to wear jeans mm-hmm. when I go into the water. For some mm-hmm. reason, I'm I, I'm thinking of a tank top and jeans. I'm like, wow, you're Kid Rock. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no tank tops. No, 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 no. Uh, it's funny because I see a lot of YouTube uh, guys that do the fishing and, and they wear the, the, it's the really light material, but it's a long sleeve hoodie for, because you're going to be out in the sun all day. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've got a couple of those. Definitely be wearing that. No doubt. That's to protect the skin, but it's also to protect other people's eyes. (laughs) I know my limits. I know my limits. If I were any whiter, if my skin were any whiter, Hunter Biden would want to snort it. That's how bad it is. <laughs> it's not. I can't have that. I can't do that to people. I have to be considerate. <laughs> that alabaster skin. Yeah. That I just have to think of others. And and by the way, you're welcome. It's not, I can't. I can't afford it. Can't afford to do that to other people. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. What's wrong with this world? Yeah. I, that's, that's our show tomorrow. <laughs> What's wrong with this world? For the rest of the week, because we're on vacation next week. But, yeah, for What's the rest wrong? of the week. What in the world is wrong with people? What the hell's going on? Yeah. <laughs> it is just <laughs> insane. I know. Really. Remember when the when the scandal was, but the president's brother drinks beer. <laughs> Remember that? Yes. Remember that? Yes, I'm old enough to remember that. Yes. Yes. Can you, well, remember, you know, you would have, uh, you would have Jimmy Carter (laughs) meet someone like in a sports shirt, Mm -hmm. another, you know, he bid some international function, not in a suit and tie. Oh, yeah, right. And people were aghast with that. Yeah. And now you've got Fetterman walking around in a hoodie. Yeah. And and basketball shorts. And basketball shorts, right. You know. You know, two two meetings in Congress while talking in his official capacity. Yeah, and it uh, would be like the you know the Carter would he'd still look very nice, be a nice shirt right. and everything. Yeah, yeah. But it, I'll never forget that that criticism at mm-hmm. you know at at that point. But yeah, mm-hmm. the Billy Beer. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that was a huge yeah. scandal. Too. It was. Oh my gosh, it was. He drinks beer. Yes. I n- I don't even know anybody that drinks beer. I've been I have been in talk radio so long mm-hmm. that when I got in talk radio, mm-hmm. if you had smoked a joint at any time in history, you mm-hmm. could not be a politician. Oh yeah, you couldn't run for office. Now, if you don't advocate for legal marijuana, you can't you, be a, a successful You would have politician. a hard time winning. Yeah, I know. Right? If you don't <laughs> at least make the case for it while you're campaigning. Right. Not that you have to go the full measure when you get there. You just have to say, look, I think it should be legal. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely where we are. And I'm still doing my research, which is now around 30 years old, trying to find out if anybody else in the history of the United States ever, you know, smoked a joint and took it but never inhaled that's never happened only one person that's happened to it's only one person that's ever said that <laughs> and that person is a liar a proven liar <laughs> wow <laughs> what a day yeah. 866 90 red eye coming up more with gary mcnamara and eric harley it's red eye radio It's Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary. He's Eric. So we still have the student loan. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and still there's the one thing that conservatives are wondering. Mm. Whether not where the Supreme Court would stand on the president actually doing that, that even if they believe that he doesn't have the authority, it's still standing. Yeah. You know, when I say it's still standing, I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not quoting the Elton John song. I'm still standing. It's yeah. it's do they have standing? Do they have standing? Yeah. Right. The file is still in there. So. Right. And affirmative action. Yes. Both of those. Yep. Sometime this week, there will be opinions coming from SCOTUS today. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.